It's no secret that Thai food in Thailand is not the same as Thai food overseas. I mean, that's pretty much the same with any cuisine anywhere abroad versus in its home country. But after living here for more than a year, I'm constantly shocked by how much I'm constantly shocked. With dishes I'd never knew existed that I can't understand why remain pretty much unknown outside the borders. Here is our list of the top 10 Thai foods I'd never heard of before moving to the country, but that now are things I can't pass up. And by the way, if you're in Thailand or planning a trip over and you want to track these down, I'll include a link in the description to my favorite spots in Bangkok to find each of these items. Number 10. Jungle Curry The first time I tried jungle curry was at a farmhouse restaurant north of Bangkok, and this dish made me question everything I'd ever known. Now, I used to be a Sichuan chef. I'm obsessed with spicy food. And I thought I'd tried the most challenging stuff all over the world. But this, this took heat to another level. Proper jungle curry might be the spiciest dish on the planet. This is a dish that, if you can't guess from the name, comes from the jungle. And because of that, there's no one set recipe. And you'll find it with stuff like frog or wild boar and an almost endless variation of herbs and spices. But the one thing it's guaranteed to have is a staggering amount of heat. Eating jungle curry is a religious experience. You'll sweat and maybe even hallucinate and somehow keep going because this stuff is wildly addictive. Number 9. Nam Khao Thod So if there's one criteria that ties this list together, it's that all these 10 dishes are things that if I see, I'm going to stop and eat. And if it's on a menu, I'm going to order. Ever since the first time I tried Nam Khao Thod a few months ago at Talad Plu Market, I've never once walked past a vendor without ordering. It's impossible. It's a salad made with fermented sour sausage and a crispy ball of red curry and rice pounded into a mixture with peanuts and fresh herbs and eaten together, wrapped in a wild beetle leaf. It hits almost every one of your taste buds, sweet and spicy and bitter and sour all together. And anytime I'm at an Isan market or neighborhood, this is an absolute must. Number 8. Gang Tai Po I'm going to say something controversial. I think this is better than Masaman curry. It has the same basic profile. It's a thick southern coconut curry with a massive depth of flavor, but where it really stands out is from the addition of two other ingredients that differ from the more common export. First is a heavier dose of tamarind, the tangy fruit that grows in a pod hanging from trees in Southeast Asia. And second is the water morning glory, a fresh and vibrant vegetable adding brightness and texture to an already complex dish. It's something that, when done right, is both familiar and challenging, and one of the best curries in Thailand. Number 7. Mian Khan There's something shocking about the simplicity of this ancient Thai snack from the Imperial Palace, with just a few components that somehow combine into an explosion of flavor. You take a wild beetle leaf and wrap it up with roasted coconut, peanut, a tiny wedge of fresh lime with the peel still on, dried baby shrimp, shallot, and ginger, and top it all with a spoonful of a sauce made from palm sugar, fish sauce, and galangal. Then eat it all in one bite. It's still considered a delicacy, and you'll find it at the very best Imperial Thai restaurants, but keep an eye out in villages and rural markets as you can almost always spot somebody selling bags of all the components for less than a dollar. Then just find a spot to sit somewhere in the sunshine and start assembling. Number 6. Kanam Bung Yuan This is a dish with a fascinating history. It probably started in Thailand, then changed form in Vietnam, then came back to Thailand somewhere around the start of the 20th century, where it might be one of the best street foods anywhere. Somehow, and for the life of me I can't tell why, this is incredibly hard to find even in Bangkok, but wherever it is you can spot it a mile away by the line that's always wrapping around the block. It's a crispy pancake stuffed with tofu and peanut, coconut, salted radish and dried shrimp, and served topped with pickled chili and cucumber in a sweet and tangy syrup. 
There are lots of forms of kanambung here, crispy pancakes with sweet or savory fillings. But this one is the undisputed king. Number 5. Kui Tiao Kwa Gai Okay, I mean look, it's gonna sound like something you can make at home. It's rice noodles, chicken, and pretty much nothing else, just a dash of soy sauce and if you want, an egg cracked on top. But you want to talk about something where the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. This dish is a miracle. First of all, it's cooked in lard over burning hot coals, which fries the noodles just enough to make something crispy on the outside and soft and toothsome underneath. Then there's the seasoning mild but still aromatic and enhanced by a table full of condiments like sriracha, white pepper, and sweet chili vinegar. Plus, just watching the cooking process makes this experience even better, which is just overkill because by itself it's almost unbelievably delicious. There is no better comfort food anywhere. Number 4. Hormok Steamed Fish Curry Mousse of all the incredible Thai curries, this might be the most unique. It's rich and packed with coconut and kaffir lime leaf and all kinds of incredible flavor. But the texture is almost like a quiche, soft and spongy. There's also a grilled variety wrapped in a banana leaf and cooked over charcoal. From the first time I ever tried it from a boat vendor at Bang Ka Chow, this became an obsession, and I've traveled across the region looking for the best versions. The Thai version of Hormok is a close cousin of Cambodia's national dish, fish amok, and it's truly one of the region's great treasures. While there are versions made with pork or fishball, the classic Thai Hormok mixes curry paste, coconut, and egg with snakehead fish, ladled over cabbage or Thai basil leaves, and then steamed. Number 3. Geng Hong Le Forget everything you thought you knew about Thai curry. There's no coconut in this one, no seafood or chicken. It's a savory pork belly stew that's a wild combination of Indian, Thai, Burmese, and Chinese from the far northwest of Thailand, with just an incredible amount of spices and herbs cooked together into one of the most intense and satisfying dishes found anywhere in the country. Hang Lei curry is one of the only dishes we've ever seen that combines garam masala with dark soy sauce. With a list of ingredients a mile long and in some of the best versions, bursts of flavor from bulbs of pickled garlic accentuating the savory stew. It's unlike any other local dish and maybe closer to China's Hongshao Ro or red braised pork than to a classic Thai curry. Number 2. Pad Sato. I mean, we did an entire video on this dish. It was perhaps the biggest shock I've had in years to find a vegetable, the sata bean, that not only had I never tasted before, but that I'd never tasted anything even similar to in my entire life. It's sulfuric and smoky, umami and bitter, like biting into a volcano, only somehow even more intense. It's wildly addictive and somehow still only found in a small region of Southeast Asia. The signature dish using the sata bean is this, pad sata, a stir-fry using ground pork, shrimp paste, and chili to complement the star of the show, the bean itself. Until this starts to finally spread overseas, this isn't something you should just try on a trip to Thailand. This is a reason to fly to Thailand all by itself. Believe it or not, there's actually something even higher on our list. A dish that totally blew our minds and took its place as one of the best things I've ever eaten. But first, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Just click the button below and turn on notifications to follow all of our food and history content here on OTR. Number 1. Khao Yang I'd heard of this dish before. I'd even tried it at Sorn, the second highest rated restaurant in all of Asia, where it's the signature course. But it wasn't until I took a trip to the Muslim regions of southern Thailand where I actually understood why this is such an obsession of its devoted fans. It's a salad, but really it's so much more than that. The reason why this is only sold in a few towns is that it takes an unbelievable amount of work to prepare. 
There are more than a dozen components, each with its own technique to bring out the absolute best of the flavors. Things like pomelo, long bean, roasted coconut, and obscure ingredients like rosy milkweed, bitter leaf, and the sata bean, all served with rice cooked with blue butterfly pea and topped with a dressing made from fish organs. Every single bite is the entire bounty of Thailand. Every taste and texture all together, each mouthful the equivalent to a tour of Southeast Asia. It's not just the best obscure dish I've tried in Thailand, it might be my favorite Thai food, period. And that's our list of the top 10 obscure Thai foods that I'd never heard of before I moved to Thailand. Did we miss anything? Leave a message in the comments and I promise if we haven't tried it yet, I'll make it a point to track it down.